Okay, good. Um, so I wanted to introduce uh, to you today, so uh, crystals. So it's a cryptographic suit for algebraic lattices, and it's a joint work with Shibai, Yoppe Boss, Leo Duca, Aiko Kiltz, Vadim Lubachevsky, John Chang, Peter Schwabe, and Damien Stelle. So um, if we like, I will, I will go over the motivation uh, fast, but uh, in, in a sense, the previous talk was motivation enough. And then I will talk about uh, lattices, and especially this suit is actually based on model lattices. Uh, and then I will present a key, a key M, and then I will present some performance in the Open Quantum Safe project. Okay, so motivation, we just heard a 20 minute talk about uh, what NIST is doing, so this project of uh, standardizing something in the next seven years. Uh, and this talk is, will be actually on the lattice, uh, on the lattice candidate, and we, we plan on submitting something to this, um, to this uh, NIST um, uh, call. Okay, so lattice cryptography, uh, it's actually already um, out and already used. So for example, in StrongSwan, StrongSwan is an open source IPsec VPN solution, and True Encrypt is in here since February 2014. Uh, Bliss, the Bliss signature scheme is in here since 2015, and New Hope, the um, key exchange mechanism since uh, last October. Also, uh, we were speaking about uh, impact assessment, so Google just realized an impact about uh, how New Hope would behave if we were like, uh, doing a, a key exchange with uh, New Hope and uh, elliptic curve, and they let it run for a few months, collected a lot of data, and they actually conclude that they didn't find any unexpected impediment of deploying something like New Hope um, but then they said, okay, uh, we leave the standardization body and like, do their work. Uh, so in this talk, I will talk a little about um, uh, key exchange. So actually we have, we have this in TLS, what happens is that you have a, a client in a server and the client say, oh, hello, uh, I want to speak to you. The server say, hello back, this is my chain of, chain of certificate, please verify. So I stripped away a lot of things in TLS, but of course, Everything should be done correctly, certificate should be checked, and like, there, there are a lot of other issues. What I'm concerned here about is this uh, element. So the server is doing some computation, the server key exchange part, then the client is doing some computation, client key exchange, and is computing his key, and then the server is also uh, uh, computing the key, and at the end, they have a shared key and they can exchange all the application data, data under this shared key. So uh, the first part is a public key part that is transmitting a secret key that then will be used in the application data. So if we want that to be, um, to replace, for example, RSA, elliptic curves or things like that, the question is what should we put here? What post-quantum primitive, post-quantum encryption, for example, should we use uh, in, in these boxes? And this is, so the first step here is the setup of the, the key M, so key encapsulation mechanism. And then there is an encapsulation itself and the decapsulation. So if we look at what exists uh, based on lattices, so here I'm focusing on lattices, uh, we have um, basically two main families. The first one is uh, uh, based on LWE, so for example, the candidate Frodo. You will hear a little more about these things uh, at the next talk. Uh, so Frodo, the communication is uh, 22 uh, kilobytes, uh, and it's based on this reconciliation mechanism that is a little um, more complicated to implement that like basic encryption. And also you have New Hope, so New Hope received a lot of uh, publicity, uh, especially since uh, Google experimented with it. Uh, there's also the BCNS15 uh, scheme, and uh, recently the author of New Hope did uh, an encryption version of New Hope uh, where, where they don't use reconciliation, but they still end up with similar communication. Um, so what do people use ring? So here, R LWE, so R is actually for ring. And the reason uh, you can see is that it allows to decrease a lot of the communication. So if you look at LWE, you're actually working with matrices, plain matrices of integers. So one element in, in LWE will be uh, a, a lot of element in ZQ. 
whereas in our, in our LWE, you're actually working over polynomials. So you're working with one polynomials, and uh, you can actually write it as a matrix where the over columns of this matrix are obtained by, for example, an anticyclic rotation. So you only need to give the first column and the other one uh, can be recovered easily. So, when, so that's a way to do the multiplication. You can expand to a matrix, but you can also just do uh, multiplication uh, over polynomials. So that's a, that's a really nice saving in size. So in particular, instead of transmitting data with like all these numbers, you're only transmitting uh, like n, uh, n times less, so like uh, there are, uh, a lot less numbers. And usually we work with uh, this ring that is uh, the, the polynomials uh, uh, with coefficient modulo q and mod xn plus one. But there are some other possibilities, uh, for example, xn minus one or xp minus x minus one. So the second one, uh, you can also uh, it, it gives a different algebraic object, and you can get good um, performances, but the, implementing the multiplication is a little more complicated. Okay, so what is crystal? So in crystal, we're, uh, so here we're speaking about LWE and ring LWE. Um, so in crystal, we're, we're actually considering module uh, LWE. So module is, will be something that is more or less in between. Um, and we will focus on two main things for this cryptographic suit, that is simplicity and modularity. Uh, so we want to avoid reconciliation. We want to avoid, uh, we, we were speaking just before about uh, avoiding uh, the complexity of the implementation so that people are not likely to do a lot of mistake when they implement. So we want to try to avoid Gaussian sampling. Um, we want to try to avoid the, the entry assumption, for example. Uh, we want to provide CCA security from the, from the start. Um, and we want something uh, where if you want another level of security, it should be easy to get. It shouldn't be like, okay, you need to re-implement everything because you have to change the model, so all your implementation is not working anymore. We want something where you want to increase the security, just increase this parameter and it will work right away. And we can get that from modules. Uh, also, um, the key EM can be used for encryption, so in a key EM, DEM, uh, for key exchange or, or uh, authenticated key exchange. So uh, here I will present, uh, I will explain a little about module lattices, then I will present Kyber, that is uh, key EM, so Thank you for the name, Isis. Um, CCA security, it's, a CCA, it's CCA secure and it's encryption based. And uh, I don't have time to, to speak about the digital signature that is called Dilithium. Um, but the idea is we want to do something a la GLP-12, uh, so it's a paper that was published at Chess in 2012, where we were sticking to uh, distribution of noises that are, for example, uniform. Okay, so what about module lattices? So this is lattices we're working on when we're working with LWE. So it's full matrices uh, over the queue. When we're working over ring lattices, we are only having like one polynomial and the other column of this matrix are actually rotations or anticyclic rotations or they can be deduced from this first column. In modular lattices, we're using, so an, an example could be, for example, to use a D times D matrix, where each element here is actually a small ring element, much smaller than like this ring lattice, but they're all, um, they're all completely independent. So for example, you could work with D-dimensional matrices of polynomial in Z, uh, Q, X, uh, quotiented by X to the 256 plus one. And this uh, dimension is fixed, for example, 256, and we choose to say 256 because we'll encrypt 256 bit at the end. Uh, but the nice thing is that you can consider many of these things, and you can see that the random part is actually all the black part here, and the other one can be derived. So it allows to reach, for example, all the dimension 256 times t, whereas if you were focusing on the ring lattice that is of the same form, you had to go from 256 to 512 to 1024 to 2048, and the gap between 1000 and 2000 is huge. Uh, is huge also in security, like 
1,000, you'll get a good security. 2,000, you'll get a, another kill security, like really, really a lot. And you would maybe want just to increase a little more. Uh, it allows to reduce also the modules, so we're working with smaller things. We can actually reduce the modules, so it means we can work with uh, smaller numbers. And it's more flexible because uh, you can see here it has this form. If I want to increase security, instead of considering uh, 3.3 metrics, I can consider 4.4 matrices. And in the implementation, it will be, able, it will be easy to change. So what is uh, the, 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 the assumption? The assumption is the learning referrer, but of these modules. So we have a, a matrix A, so this matrix A, sorry. Um, it's a matrix here, so it's a matrix of polynomials. And you multiply by a vector of polynomials. You add a, a noise that is uh, small, so small polynomials, and it gives you a, a value. So that's uh, uh, the learning referrer. And uh, if we uh, restrict to small secrets, we can actually get uh, a square matrix here. And we get this form here. And we'll need small secrets in order to do a key exchange. So this is, uh, I want to stress something. This is not uh, a revolutionary technique. This scheme is uh, uh, the scheme of Regev from 2005. Uh, it's uh, the fact that we can take it with square matrices, it's because there is this equivalence from 2009. Uh, the, the ring things were considered in 2010. Uh, the module thing is just a generalization of the ring thing, so it was only written down in 2014, but it was already considered before. We, we are not reinventing the wheel here, and I think it's important uh, for, for, for the fact that we want standardization to, to be successful. Uh, so the, the module learning refer, the decisional version of the problem is, can you distinguish between something completely uniform uh, with respect to something uniform, and the last one is actually obtained as this, as a module LW sample. Okay. So, uh, an interesting point that I want to make here is that actually, when you think about it, it will not be less efficient than ring LWE. So first, if you want to derive the matrix A, you can actually derive it from one seed. Okay, you have, um, for example, 3.3 .3 .3 polynomials to derive, so you're just having one seed, you, you fit it in, a, in an extendable uh, function, and it gives you a lot of values, and it, 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 it fits your matrix. So, for example, you do shake 128 on this SID, and you'll recover all this matrix. Uh, but the key point here is that we're actually, so we're computing uh, this thing here uh, for the public key. So we're computing this matrix product times the secret plus a small error, and you get a value B. And when we'll transmit the key, we'll actually transmit the SID, so it's only 256 bits, and then we'll transmit this part here. But as you can see, this part, it's exactly, uh, it's actually, it will be exactly the same number of elements as a ring uh, element. So it means we're not, compared to ring LWE for the communication side, we're actually not gaining, uh, we're, we're not complexifying the thing. It will not be heavier to use module uh, in that respect. Uh, but uh, it will be easier for modularity, and we actually have more random, like less structure. So uh, here we have a little also more multiplication of polynomials, but it's multiplication with smaller polynomials. So in a in a certain way, um, it, it will uh, balance a little bit, uh, and the resulting element as size um, is the same size as a ring LW element of size. 256 times t. So in, uh, what it means also, because at the end we'll do the cross product of this with this secret, and it will give you one polynomial. And this polynomial will be of dimension 256, so it means we're uh, optimal to encrypt this 256 bit. So actually, in general, module LWE is not more efficient than ring LWE, but here we're encrypting 256 bit, so it will be. Okay, so what about the implementation? I said it was easy. So for example, here we're storing the, the, um, the, the vectors uh, in this uh, uh, polyvec st uh, struct. So how do we compute the entity uh, of this vector? So we're just doing a loop with uh, Kyber D 
cable D is the parameter, the defined parameter D, and we're just doing the entity on, on the small elements, and it's a 250, it's an entity of 256 elements. So also, it will be easy to increase security, because uh, with very little implementation in the sense that, so if I don't, if I don't modify any parameter but D, and I increase D by one, you will see that I gain a lot of security. I lose a little on the fact that I have a little more decryption error here, so if I want to have the same level of decryption error, I will have to increase the noise a little bit. But otherwise, if I just um, increase D and, and take one more, I will, I will gain a lot of security. So that's really nice to, for example, reach different security target as uh, it has been asked for, for NIST, by NIST. Uh, where you can say, okay, I recommend the version with 3.3, but you can also consider 4.4, and you'll get much more security. So what is the uh, key encapsulation mechanism? Uh, it's more or less what's on this slide. So I have this, uh, the server is actually doing uh, the setup, so it's, uh, it's creating a, a public key and a secret key, and sending the seed of this public key and sending this element here that is the same size as a ring element uh, as a public key. And uh, the user is doing the encapsulation, so is, is drawing something, is drawing a new secret key and a, a new noise, uh, is doing this multiplication, and uh, here is adding, uh, is, is drawing a key uh, completely uh, at random is encrypting the key and like putting it in a ciphertext and then they send the ciphertext back to the server. The server can use the secret key to decrypt uh, and recover um, a noisy version of the key and then if they run things correctly, so here this thing is actually Q divided by two times the key, so if you look at the round of two divided by Q times the key, you will get the same thing as here, because here is with a little more noise, so when you divide by Q and you round it, the noise will disappear. So you have the same way of rounding. And this is, this is exactly that the, the regev scheme uh, from the beginning, the, that we know from 2005. And this thing here will be easier to implement than um, reconciliation mechanism. So if we look at the encryption scheme, what it is, so I draw a seed, I use shake in order to generate my matrix of polynomials, I draw um, some vectors of uh, small polynomials, so small polynomials, actually the coefficient will be uh, drawn according to a binomial distribution, so you're just like adding a, a few bits, so you're drawing something at, at uh, random and you're adding the bits and it gives you uh, exactly the, the coefficients here. Then you're computing B as A times S plus E, and the public key is the C and B, and the secret key is S. So then, how do you encrypt? So in order to encrypt, you're, um, so you encrypt, using the public key, you encrypt a message that is 256 bit long, and you're using some random coins. And I'm specifying the coins here because we're using a CCA transformation, and we want actually in the, and, and uh, at the end, the server will recompute the ciphertext and verify that it has not been modified. So you, you get the key, the, you get the seed and B, you can reconstruct A, then you can generate uh, S and E as a new uh, polynomials with small elements using these uh, coins here. Um, and you can compute a transpose of S prime times A plus E prime. So that's one element. And so that was these elements here, the three first elements of the matrix. And then you can compute the fourth element of the matrix, sorry. The fourth element is yours using B. You're computing B um, and the uh, inner product with S prime and you're adding a new noise and you're actually encrypting. So you're adding the, the, the message here. So you're adding the message in the, in the coefficients. Then you're putting that as a ciphertext, and to decrypt, you're just computing V minus U, U, uh, the scalar product of U and S, so this will remove uh, a, uh, S, S prime transpose A times S, and you'll recover actually this thing here plus a noise. So then you, you have this simple decryption procedure and we'll, you will be able to recover the MIs. So if you look at the, uh, at the, the key EM, what it does is that uh, the, the generation by the server is just generating a public key and a secret key, sending the public key over, 
the encapsulation, you're drawing some randomness. Uh, you're applying uh, SHA-256 first because you don't want to reveal the randomness of your, um, of your computer. Uh, and then you apply uh, SHA-512 and you get like the first part will be the, uh, the key and the second part will be the coins. So then you encrypt with these coins, you encrypt the value X. So it means this during decryption, you will be able to recover X. And in order to, be, to recover key later, you will be reapplying re uh, SHA-512. So then you send, you send your ciphertext, so you're sending U and, uh, uh, sorry, this shouldn't be here. This C here shouldn't be here. So you're sending U and V, and here uh, in, you recover X prime, you recover K prime and cons prime, and then you re-encrypt and you verify that the re-encryption is actually the same as the ciphertext that you received. So here we're working with uh, dimension 256, so you were considering 3.3 matrices. Uh, the, the, the polynomials have uh, small um, elements and the elements are, are drawn according to this binomial distribution and it's really easy to sample elements according to this distribution. And also the modulus is smaller, for example, than in New Hope. It's only 13 bit long. So if you think about the implementation aspect, so entity in dimension 256, and the really nice thing is that if we want to increase security, we just change T and we keep the same entity. Uh, the primitive use, so we're using Shake, we're using uh, SHA-3256 and SHA-3512. We're trying to be consistent and using like only one big family here. Uh, there's this binomial uh, error distribution. It's essentially the same as in New Hope. It's actually uh, smaller, it's actually simpler. Uh, we're doing a lot of compression in order to transmit as, as, as little as possible. And uh, what I want to stress out is that it's actually, the code is actually similar and the performance will be really similar to New Hope and New Hope Simple. Uh, so, it's, so this scheme can actually be used like in New Hope, but it's actually much more general. And you can use it, for example, uh, in, uh, in encryption, so as a key MDM, or you can use it as an authenticated key exchange. So can I see the code soon? Um, so the reason is that uh, we were groups uh, that were not working together at first and then we came together. Uh, we still have a couple of things to agree on uh, with respect to the quantum model, Oracle model and the CCA transformation. So we expect a really similar uh, performance compared to the code. I will talk about the performance very soon. But we already have um, this GitHub account that is to this does not yield to anything, so Pico Crystal is created, but uh, we'll, as soon as it's available, we'll put the implementation there. So last, um, if we have some time left, yes. Uh, I wanted to mention the Open Quantum Safe project because when I wanted to assess the performance, it was really nice to have this project. So the Open Quantum Safe project is a project uh, where the leaders are uh, Michele Mosca and Douglas Stebele. And it's actually um, um, a, pro a project where uh, you have a, a, an open quantum safe library and that, is, uh, that is a wrapper, an API over the existing implementation of some primitives. And then there's also an open SSL uh, integration of this, of this library into OpenSSL uh, 1.0.2. Uh, so in particular, if I build everything right now and I, I do OpenSSL speed, uh, I get this uh, different uh, post-quantum uh, key action that are already in, uh, in the library. So uh, uh, here it's um, uh, isogeny-based, here it's code-based, and here it's, um, uh, it's lattice-based. And you can see that uh, for each, you have different trade-offs between like communications or uh, timings here. So what about uh, our scheme? So I just uh, put the scheme directly, uh, our implementation directly in this project. Um, when I compare, we have really similar timings to New Hope right now. Uh, the only difference is that at the end, uh, the decapsulation is uh, there is a little more work because we're re-encrypting in order to verify, so it, this is a little more costly. But the very nice thing is actually we have the communication requirement compared to New Hope. So it's actually two times smaller. 
And the reason is that, yes, we're, we're using, at the end, we're transmitting something, and it's, it's, it's really encrypting 2056 bits. And you, we're using a lot of compression. So here, just a comment about security. So there is this discussion about security. As uh, Rene just told us the talk before, uh, this uh, does not mean um, that there is an attack in exactly this number of uh, operation uh, over the schemes. What happens is that these are security estimates where you apply the known classical and the known quantum algorithm, and they are actually really complicated. So you take this, like one of the smallest elements that is really hard in that, and you say, okay, let's assess the security of that. And in the, in the security of this piece, the best algorithm that we know today, they can reach that. But actually, this is really pessimistic. So in the sense that uh, if we really have, we want to have the, the security number of cycle, it would be much, much more than that. Uh, so one nice thing is that for this project, for this open quantum safe, is that you can do pull requests. And really, I hope a lot of you will um, contribute to that. This is a really nice thing in order to compare. You can just um, do a wrapper around your implementation, and it will work right away. Uh, so as soon as we put the code out, uh, we'll do a pull request on this uh, open quantum safe project. So to conclude, uh, we're using uh, module lattices because they are modular, and uh, we really focus on easiness of implementation and simplicity. Uh, so Kyber is a, a key encapsulation mechanism that is uh, nearly as fast as New Hope and uh, is holding the, the communication. And also, we want CCA security by default. So it means it can actually be used in more cases than you hope. So it can be used in authenticated key exchange, in key MDM, uh, or also in, uh, uh, in long-term keys, on long-term keys. So there can be some key reuse. Uh, also, we have this uh, signature, so it will come a little after. So the, the idea here is we want to try to avoid complexity, so let's take the same uh, modules and let's base it, um, let's, uh, let's take the same elements and let's try to build something that is similar with uniform noise and things like that. So just to, so that's a conclusion. In order to not take a slot for the, for the quick uh, lighting session, we have some internships uh, with the people in our group, so please feel free to contact us. Thank you. Great, very nice. I guess we have time for uh, one or two questions, and then we have a break. Um, can you go to slide three or four, I think, on the key exchanges, please? Uh, this one? The uh, next one, uh, with all the key, uh, this one, yes, the one before, please. Oh, okay. Uh, so here you, you uh, mentioned the, uh, the paper Jin Tiding here, and uh, what does that paper have to do with all this key exchange? Can you explain to us? So, uh, this, uh, so in this paper, there's, it's actually a key exchange theme where they're speaking a little about reconciliation. So I wanted to, to explain that um, this reconciliation is actually uh, described a little here, it's described a little here, it's also described a little in the New Hope paper. So it's actually a big... Uh, but here I disagree. I think that this new reconciliation technique is invented by me, which is Jin Tai Ding in 2011. I don't think they invent... And Chris Packard's paper is much later than mine. It's yeah, 2014. It's, it's later, yeah, yes. it's true. Yeah, so, um, so in my opinion, those, all those key exchanges here are variants of what I did. So I, I just want to, to show you something else uh, here. Like this scheme here that is uh, like the encryption scheme that will be used on this learning refer. I'm referring a lot of papers, not, not only the first one. And the reason no, no, is... I'm, I'm not talking about no, this, but your, the, your the, thing. I'm talking good, about key comment. exchange. It's a good comment. I'm sure yeah. you're, yes. you're going to take it on, in, in, into yeah. account. Yes. Thank thanks for the, thanks okay. for the comment. Okay, yeah. thank you. So just a uh, small thing. So the the server is now generating the seed that, gener that generates A. Yes. Um, and conceivably, they could be compelled to use a particular A or something. So is it is it no, it, it's 
Is there a reason that when you uh, generate the A, generate the, the A matrix from, uh, from this seed, that it's, um, it's hard to, to find one that's a product of two, that, that could be written as a product of two smaller things? There was some attack in there. So, so we're fitting that into Shake, right? And Shake is expanding uh, this seed, and actually if you believe in the security of Shake, it will be really hard to, to make it so that it's a product so it's, to... Well, the, it has nothing to do with Shake. The question is just about the properties of... It's a much more basic question, just about the properties of these matrices A, that yes. for two, one of these matrices to be written as a product of two smaller, relatively smaller things is unlikely, yes? Yes. Okay. I have a question about the computation of your security estimates. Uh, very last slide, or second last slide. Um, when you, com com so the number we're looking at there, is that the estimated cost in terms of an SVP problem of some dimension? Yes. How do you compare ring LWE to LWE, and in particular, how do you take into account this, the fact that you're using a cyclotomic ring instead of a more general ring? Okay, um, so what we're, so, okay, what, what we're doing actually here, so it's uh, in order to attack this uh, ring LWE, you're often uh, coming back to the, to the full matrix and you're like looking at uh, reducing it and you're looking at small vectors in, in, this, in this matrix. Uh, so here it means that you're actually expanding this ring LWE into a bigger matrix, right? And module LWE you're also expanding in the bigger matrix. And you're looking at this and you're trying to reduce it and you're applying BKZ in uh, dimension B. In order for the attack to succeed, we need at least this block size and the, the, the SVP in this block size that is a smaller operation that we'll need to do uh, is actually giving this cost but you need to do much more SVP and then you do, you do it, uh, you do several rounds and you do it on, on uh, and it, this is like the smaller dimension possible, but actually these dimensions are huge. Uh, and the reason is that uh, in these schemes, most of the time the lattice are already quite reduced. And if you want to reduce them more, you actually have to work a lot. So this is just looking at the, at the uh smaller block steps for the best known algorithms in each one of the cases, and estimating from that. So you mean in the module version? No, I mean, that's how you got those numbers there for the security in bits. It's, it's a SVP over the matrix. Okay. Yeah. Hi, uh, I just wanted to say the obvious, which is that we are interested in these schemes for things that need to be secure in 20, 30 years. So the security estimates should consider security in 20, 30 years, which of course we have no idea, but I, definitely these ones probably are too non-conservative, right? I actually think they're conservative in the you, sense... For, uh, yes, in the sense... So the, the one we'll claim in the full version will be conservative. Um, the, the reason is that we'll consider the best things, then we'll be, we'll be like, this is now the best plausible attack, and this attack is actually a really small uh, element of a much larger attack that you will need to perform. So it means you actually gain uh, nearly 40 bits uh, of uh, like doing all the SVPs that you need in order to reduce the, the, the lattice. But I agree that we'll need uh, conservative estimates here. 